be seated. Well, good evening. Well, that was pretty weak, all right? No, that wasn't too bad, okay? Not too bad, all right? I know some of you are looking at me kind of funny, and I'll, I'll explain everything, okay? But first of all, i got to ask, who got your nap in? Uh, one person. Harold did get a nap in? I tell you what, okay. I didn't get a nap in either, all right? But uh, it's good to see you out tonight in the Lord's house. And uh, first of all, you'll notice, this is not Brother Caleb, all right? Uh, he, he's much better looking, okay? Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, but no, uh, Brother Caleb texted me last night and uh, said he's got a, a slight fever and uh, some just stomach uh, uh, pain. Uh, he went and got tested this morning, though, did a rapid test, and it came back negative. And so at least that uh, is a praise. Uh, but he's just feeling a, a little under the weather. And, uh, and so he asked Brother Ken to fill in. Now you say, okay, well, what's wrong with you? Well, this is just normal. I'm, I'm being normal. Uh, I, I've, I've not been feeling too good the past few days, but that's a whole other story. Uh, I believe mine was actually kidney stone uh, on, uh, when we were on our trip. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, and I'm, I'm going to smack Caleb when I see him, all right? We were not on vacation. Uh, contrary to what he said Sunday, we were at a... Uh, bivocational pastors and wives retreat over at the Cove, the Billy Graham Training Center in Asheville. Uh, and uh, we were there, but uh, I woke up about 3 o'clock uh, Sunday morning in a lot of pain. Uh, I'm talking a lot of pain. And, uh, and so uh, my wonderful wife had to drive all the way home and listen to me just uh, whine the whole way. Uh, I did sleep in most of it, all right. And, uh, but we got back home about 2 o'clock Sunday, but I'm still just not 100%. Uh, but for precaution, okay, I don't want to get close to you, and if it's a bug or something like that, and, and then pass it on to you, all right? So uh, I'll pull this up and, uh, and just be uh, extra cautious if we're in close vicinity to one another, all right? But I'm here to worship, and I'm here to praise, and, uh, and uh, just to have a good time in the Lord's house. Would you bow your head with me? And let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you for another day of life. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together in your house as your people. And Lord, that we have come into your house. And Lord, we have gathered in your name here this evening to meet with you, to fellowship with you. Uh, Lord, to follow you and, and to, uh, for, for you to lead us in praise and in worship and in a time of Bible study here this evening. So, Father, I pray that you'll speak to us. Lord, give us ears to hear. Uh, give us minds to, to understand and to comprehend uh, the knowledge and the wisdom from your word. And, Father, I pray, Lord, that this evening, Lord, that as you speak to us, we'll hear. And, Lord, that we'll take what we hear and hide your word in our heart. But then, Father, that we'll take it and we'll share it with someone who needs a word of encouragement uh, from from your word. And so, Lord, uh, fill, uh, fill this place this evening with your presence and with your glory. And, uh, and Lord, we thank you, Lord, as we just sang about there, Lord, how heaven came down. Lord, your glory filled our soul. You washed our sins away. Lord, you have made us new. We've gone from the darkness to the light. May we praise you for being that God of salvation. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, it's good to have you back. Robert, Olivia, we missed y'all and uh, had a good sermon, but we still missed y'all. And I, I sang, and you got to hear it. It's okay. He said he never had heard the words of that song that I sang Sunday, so I was going to sing it for him, and he wasn't here, but I already had plans. It's just the way it worked out. Page 333, if you'd like to turn in your book, it'll also be on the board. Leaning on the everlasting arms.
song. We came in a very beautiful song. It's page 243 in your book. Sweet, sweet, sweet.
to get online and look up, you know, you understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> and so it, it kind of goes like that. Remind me to do this. And, and so she'll say, okay, I'll remind you. And then as the day goes on and as we get into the night, she'll say, wasn't I supposed to remind you to do something? And I'll say, yes, you were supposed to remind me to do that. And she'll say, well, what was I supposed to remind you? And I'll say, I don't know. I don't remember. And uh, most of you can testify to that, all right? I mean, the biggest lie that I tell myself on an everyday basis is this. I don't need to write it down because I will remember it. And I forget, okay? I'm learning as the, the older that I get, the more I seem to forget. I'm just not remembering things like I used to. Someone once said, the only thing faster than the speed of thought is the speed of forgetfulness. And I find that true in my own time, all right? Uh, I was telling uh, some of you before the service this evening, even today, I was having trouble remembering uh, things today. I found myself uh, driving down the road, and I thought, well, wait a minute, where am I going? I forgot where I was going, and I was going the wrong direction. And then it dawned on me I was going the wrong direction. I needed to turn around and, and go the right way. And so, matter of fact, back in the summer, uh, I was up in Knoxville when, when, uh, when she was uh, uh, at the hospital with uh, Fort Sanders. Is that right, dear? And uh, yeah, I was trying to remember. See, I can't even remember the hospital, all right? But she was at Fort Sanders, and and I and so I went and I parked in the parking garage. You ever parked in those parking garages? And I parked in the parking garage, and I went into the hospital, and and then they were discharging her. And I said, they said, if you'll go get your car, and then uh, and call us, or you know, text us, and then and we'll tell you where to go pick her up. We'll bring her out this side door. I go to the parking garage, and I'm like, okay, I know the van is out here somewhere. I thought I was on the right level. I was on level, I believe it was level four, and I couldn't find it. So I go up to five, and it wasn't there, and it wasn't on six, and I go back down to five, still don't see it, go down to three, and it's not on three, and I'm sitting there thinking, where in the world did I park? And then I finally found it. You know where it was? On four, <laughs> right where it was, when I somehow I missed it, all right? But I could not remember where I had parked. You know, for the most part, the things that we forget is insignificant. I mean, there are things that we forget all the time, and it doesn't really matter that we forgot those things. But men, we know there are certain things we better remember. We better remember that anniversary. We better remember that birthday. And there are times, though, that we forget certain things, and when we forget, we understand that there are serious consequences. I, I love the story about a pastor, and, and the pastor was officiating a wedding ceremony, and in the middle of the wedding ceremony, he forgot the bride's name. Can you believe that? I mean, he's up there officiating, and he forgot the bride's name. And so he turns to the groom, and he says, Will you, Jason, take Michelle to be your lawfully wedded wife? And he says, No. And the pastor, he, he, he just he kind of puzzled. And he thought, What in the world? He says, No, because her name is Ashley. And he had forgotten the name. All right, anyway. So he, he, the pastor knew he had messed up big time. You know, there are many things that we forget, uh, but they will not have a lasting impact. But there are those things that we can forget, and when we forget those things, it will last for all of eternity. If we forget or if we disregard what we have been taught concerning how we are to live for the Lord today in this life, then that can have an eternal impact in this life. Peter realized something. When we get to these verses here, Peter realizes that he is nearing the end of his life. And so he is writing, and then he says, there are some things that I am going to constantly remind you of. I am going to remind you to remember certain things. Peter says, you have already been taught these things, and I'm simply reminding you of these things. Look in verse 8, if you would. He says in verse 8, for if these 
things. Now, these things, and he mentions it again uh, down in uh, uh, one of those verses, but I already forgot, all right? But he says it again where he says these things. Things, okay? Uh, it's in verse 12. He says, For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. There it is. What are these things? Brother James, pull up the. Did you, did you find the NET version, brother? We have that. Pull up verse 12 in the NET. I was reading this earlier today, and I thought about this. Look at how it reads in the NET. Therefore, I intend to remind you constantly of these things. Listen, folks, that is something that pastors and, and Sunday school teachers or, or, just pe or just people in general, because all of us should be discipling at least one other person, all right? And sometimes a part of that discipleship is simply constantly reminding them of certain things from the Word of God. Well, what does he mean by these things that he says there in verse 8 and verse 12? The, these things that he's talking about are the things that he mentions in verses 5 through 7 that we talked about last time. How we are to add to our faith. Remember that your spiritual life begins with faith. You come to salvation, and salvation is by grace through faith. And so the Christian life and salvation in your spiritual life, it begins with faith. But then he says you need to add to, there are those supplements. That's the, these things that he is referring to. The virtue and the knowledge and the temperance, the patience, the godliness, the brotherly kindness, the charity. Those things that he mentions there. Peter says, I realize that my life is drawing in. Uh, the end of my life is drawing near. And so his desire is that these truths and these things that they would be remembered by uh, those early Christians and that for you and I today, that even though he will be long gone, that it will still have a lasting impact to us today. You see, think about that. As a, as a minister of the gospel, as a pastor, well, you know, we only have a short time to equip the, 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 the sheep, all right, those who are under... Uh, the care of the shepherd and, and the flock. And so listen, I know I've said this, and I say this, and, and listen, folks, I say it with, with all the sincerity in my heart. I do not take for granted the privilege and the blessing it is to stand behind this sacred pulpit and to share with you God's Word. I don't. I, I love this. And, and I love preaching to you and sharing God's Word and teaching you God's Word. And now listen up. I say that because, one, I don't know what the future holds. I mean, I don't know if I'll be here Sunday or not, all right? I plan to be here Sunday, okay? But I may not be here Sunday. But, and so that's why I say, I, I don't know. And so what I simply want to say is this, is that I realize the importance of equipping you and reminding you and wanting you to remember certain things from the word of God. And so look at verse 13. Here's what he says. He says, yes, I think it is right. As long as I am in this tent. To stir you up by reminding you. Now let's understand something there. When he says there, I think it is right. As long as I am in this tent. He's not talking about a tent. That he is out there camping in the woods. All right. I know a lot of you like to camp, and you like to go out and sleep in the tent. God bless you, all right? That's just not me, okay? Hey, that's not what he means. Tent there is the word tabernacle. He's talking about his body. Your body is a tabernacle. It's a tent. It's an earthly dwelling, okay? And so when he says tent, as long as I am here in the flesh, in this body, in this life, I'm going to do what? I'm going to stir you up. Sometimes I want to stir you up, you know? Sometimes it's good to stir things up, isn't it? I mean, I, I love how the Word of God, sometimes the Word of God says we got to shake you up. Sometimes I do just want to come out there and shake you real good, all right? But then I remember we got a social dinner, okay? <laughs> but, but sometimes we need a good shaking, and sometimes we need a good stirring. The Word of God is filled with reminders. <clears throat> he says, I want to stir you up. By reminding you. So let me give you three things, all right? 
Number one is this. I want to remind you to remember your instruction. If he says in verse 13 that I think it's right, that as long as I'm in this tabernacle, that I'm going to stir you up by reminding you. Here's what I want to remind you of. I want to remind you to remember your instruction. Go back to verse 8. He says, for if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as children of God, we have a wealth of knowledge at our fingertips, do we not? I mean, uh, not only do we have the Word of God, but we can get out our smartphones and we can pull out multiple translations and then we can pull out commentaries and we can read all those things. We have a wealth, a vast knowledge of, uh, of, of uh, resources at our fingertips. Everything that we need to know, though, all of the instruction that we need is found right here in the Word of God. Amen? It's all here. You, you remember that old saying? Everything that I needed to know in life, I learned in what? Kindergarten. kindergarten. You know it, don't you? All right? That's my kindergarten teacher. You're so special, okay? And, and so everything I need to know in life, I learned in kindergarten. I don't know if that's true or not. But everything I need to know in, in, in life, it, it can be found right here in the Word of God. And so a wise Christian, a wise child of God will hear they will read and they will hear and then they will heed the Father's instruction. Look at verse 8. In the context of verse 8, Peter is referring to the instructions given in those previous verses about supplementing your faith. These things, the seven things listed in those previous verses. Now here's what he says. If, you, if these things are yours... And abound. Then you will not be unfruitful. In other words, here's what's going to happen. If you will follow the instruction that you have received from the word of God, then you will be fruitful for the Lord. You will be a witness for Jesus Christ. You will reach others with the gospel. You are going to have an, etern uh, an impact on the kingdom and then you're going to live a life that's going to bring glory and honor to our heavenly father. You're going to abound. When you abound then you will not be unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of this is possible. It's possible if you remember your instruction. But see here's what we do. Sometimes we forget don't we? You know, is it that it's kind of interesting? <laughs> and this reminds me of uh, Miss Suzanne. You'll like this, uh, Charles Stanley. I remember Charles Stanley saying this. Now, I was listening to Charles Stanley preach a sermon one time. This always, this is, I've always remembered this. Thought this was so funny that that he, he preached one Sunday, and then on Monday, the very next day, he was out at a store, and he ran into a church member. And that church member, you know, sometimes when you run into church members, they don't, they don't know what to say. Especially like on a Monday when they see you out in public, they'll just say, that was a good sermon yesterday, Pastor. And Brother Charles Stanley said, he, he had a little bit of a mean streak in him. And he said, you know what? He said, really? What was the best part? And, and said, the guy just kind of stood there and said, well, uh, 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 uh. And he couldn't even remember one part of the sermon. See, sometimes we're like that. We come to church on Sunday, and we hear the sermon, or we sit in Sunday school. And we learn the Sunday school lesson. But as soon as we go home, what do we do? We forget. We don't remember the instruction that we have received. And so he says, if we forget or if we disregard, we will be barren. We will be unfruitful. The Christian life is a life that is marked by faith, by virtue, by knowledge, all of those things that he mentions there in those previous verses and, and, and the, the brotherly kindness and the charity. And listen, I, I would say this. Just hear me out. I, I would say that if those qualities are not present, if those character traits are not evident in your life, it could simply be because you've never been born again. Think about it. I mean, if you've been born again, if you've been saved, then there's the saving faith. 
But then you're going to exhibit those things. These things. And you'll be fruitful. Remember your instruction. Let me give you another thing. I want to remind you to remember your salvation. Remember your salvation. Go to verse 9 now if you would. He says in verse 9, For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sin. Now you would think that it would be a near impossibility to forget that we have been cleansed from our sin. You would say, you're sitting there thinking, how in the world can somebody forget the day that Jesus came into their life? When they were saved, when they were born again. But you know, it's far too common a phenomenon. It happens more often than you think. Uh, I mean, there, you know, there, there are days and there are moments in, in our life, uh, momentous occasions, all right, uh, that kind of stand out above everything else. I mean, you know, like graduation, right? If you're a parent, you've got a child that graduates, you know, the graduation, all that. You know, that, that's, a, that's one of those occasions that kind of stand out. Or, or, or your, your wedding, right? Marriage or, or the, the birth of your children. Those, those are days that just kind of stand out above everything else. But you know what the best thing is? I will never forget this. I'll never forget as an eight-year-old boy sitting in that revival service down on the front pew by, beside my dad listening to the evangelist preach and share the gospel and the Holy Spirit convicted me that was the day that my life was changed radically forever. In other words, that was the day of salvation. And sometimes we kind of forget that. We kind of forget that we have went from death unto life. The day that we were born again. Now, there are those that will say, yes, Brother Robert, I can tell you. I can tell you the, the date, and, and I can tell you exactly what day it was, and I can tell you. I mean, they, they've got everything down to a T. I, I can't do that. I don't remember if it was a Monday or a Tuesday. I just remember it was a revival service. Because I remember it was revival, and it wasn't a Sunday or a Wednesday. I know that. And I can remember sitting down on the front pew, and I can remember the evangelist. I don't remember who the evangelist is. I don't remember the name of it. But I can remember the Holy Spirit convicted me of my need to be saved and going home and telling my dad and saying, Hey, Dad, I need to be saved. I think I'm lost. And him leading me to faith in Christ. We need to remember our salvation. I love how he says it, says it there in verse 9. That we have forgotten that we have been cleansed from our sin. Listen to what I'm about to say. Remembering your salvation involves reflecting on the fact that Jesus did something for you that you couldn't do for yourself. That's why you need to pause from time to time pretty much every day. And you need to remember the fact that Jesus did something that he didn't have to do. And he did it for you because he loves you. And you can't save yourself. Remember salvation. That you've been cleansed. You've been forgiven. You've been redeemed. Transformed. Regenerated. You've been set apart. Justified. Sanctified. And one day we're going to be glorified. That's salvation. Purged from our sins. Now look what Peter says in verse, there in verse 9, alright? He says, if you lack these things, there's the these things again, right? I knew it was in there again. It's in verse 8, and it's in verse 9, and then he says it again down in verse 12, these things. If you lack these things, what's the these things now? The faith, the virtue, the temperance, the patience, the brotherly kindness, those seven things added unto the faith, the supplements, right? He says, if you lack these things, you are short-sighted. You are blind and you can't see afar off. In other words, here's what's going to happen. At some point, you're going to doubt if you've ever really been saved. There, there's not going to be that assurance there. When, when this when this evidence of salvation is not present, then assurance is difficult. 
I'm going to say that one more time. Think about this. If the Christian life and the spiritual life begins with faith, because we are saved by grace through faith, and then we are to supplement our faith with virtue and temperance and patience and brotherly love, uh, brotherly kindness and charity, all those things, right? And if we're not exhibiting those things, chances are we've never really truly been saved, and then we're going to doubt the salvation, and then that means we're not going to have a uh, there's no evidence of salvation, which means there's no assurance of salvation either. Now, I'm going to be honest. Yes, there have been, there's been times in my life when I've doubted salvation. I have. I, I would dare say every single one of us here this evening would raise our hand and say, yes, there have been times in my life when I have doubted my salvation. If I've truly been saved. I, I don't want you leaving here doubting. I want you to leave here this evening you remembering, all right? I want you to remember your salvation. And I want you to have the assurance of it. Look at verse 10. This is what he says in verse 10. And verse 10 now, well, we, could, we could stay here all night on verse 10. But we won't, all right? Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. We don't like that word election there, okay? And I'm not talking about the election coming up in November. And God help us if you watched the debate last night, we're in a mess. Amen? Uh, I'd turn it over there and I'd watch maybe 30 seconds of it. And then I'd say, I'd turn it back over on a <clears throat> despicable me too. <laughs> and I thought that's more entertaining. Uh, I, I prayed. I would turn it over and I would watch as much as I could and then I would just turn it back and then I'd pray. And that's what we need to do, amen? We just need to pray and we're going to do a lot of praying between now and November, but that's not what he's talking about there. But now here's what, he, here's what I want you to notice. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Now, Brother James, pull up the NET version for us in verse 10 there, brother. And uh, look at the NET translation of verse 10. Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every effort to be what? Everybody say, sure. sure. That's assurance. You ought to be able to remember the, the, the time when you asked Jesus to come into your heart and to save you. Amen? And then there's that assurance. And I can make every effort to be sure of my calling and election. For by doing this, you will never stumble into sin. If you will remember on a daily basis the fact that Jesus has saved your sorry old wretched soul, it will keep you from stumbling into sin. Well, let me move on. I want you to have the assurance. I want you to have a certainty. I want you to live the abundant, victorious Christian life. And, uh, and listen, you know, there, there, are, there are those today that are living today, there are Christians today that don't live this way. There are some folks who are missing out on this victory. They, they don't have that blessed assurance that there's a doubt in their heart. And, you know, it could be simply because they have never truly been born again. That may be the reason they are doubting salvation. Because they've never truly been saved. Then there are others that they simply need to be reminded of what Jesus did for them on the cross of Calvary. So remember your instruction. Remember what you've learned. Remember, remember the word of God. And then remember your salvation. And then the last thing is this. Remember your destination. You may, who knows where they're going? I, I don't mean going home tonight, all right? I know where I'm going, amen? Remember your destination. It's going to get good now, okay? I love this. Look at verse 11. For so an entrance will be supplied to you how? Abundantly. Mm, that's good. Into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, that's a good verse. When we remember our salvation, 
what Jesus did for us, what we could not do for ourselves, and then we will remember our destination, that one of these days I'm going to fly away. And, and, and there's going to be a grand and glorious entrance. Those gates are going to swing open wide. I love how he puts this. The picture there is of a king or uh, a, a, well, a Roman, uh, a Roman, uh, you know, the captain of the guard, so to speak, all right? A military commander who has gone out to battle, and they've won the battle, and now they're coming back into the city. And as they're coming back into the city, they're riding up on their horse, and, and they've got the crown, and they've got, you understand what I'm saying there? I'm, I'm, I'm giving you very loose details, but I'm trying to just paint you a little picture there. And so this is what, this is what Peter is saying, that there's going to be an entrance supplied to you abundantly. They're, listen, as a Christian, we have a glorious hope of a wonderful place. Jesus, he has assured us of a home in heaven. He said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be what? Also. So for all of us who have been born again, saved, washed by the blood, we can look forward to the fact that we have an eternal destination. He says you're going to enter the kingdom. And it's an abundant entrance. One day, remember, remember what Peter's writing? Peter, Peter realized, Peter realized that his life on this earth, his tabernacle, his tent, is about to go. He's, about, he's at the end of his life. He's nearing the end. And he wants to remind these people. He is writing, and he says, I want to remind you. That you're going to enter into an everlasting kingdom where Jesus reigns supreme. We're going to get a new body. Amen? Amen. We're going to have that robe of white. We're going to receive the, the crowns. You know, all throughout the Word of God, it talks about all the crowns. Uh, real, real quick, real, real quick. I, I'm not going to, I'm just going to go through a list real quick. The Bible talks about the incorruptible crown. It's a, uh, the, the incorruptible crown is awarded to the person for the faithfulness to the Lord. Hey, stay faithful. Be faithful to God. Be faithful. You can read about it over 1 Corinthians 9, 25. The Bible talks about the crown of life. The crown of life is for the person who endures and overcomes temptation. You can read about it over in James chapter 1, verse 12. The Bible talks about the crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing, that is the soul winner's crown. That's in 1 Thessalonians 2.19. The Bible talks about the crown of righteousness. And the crown of righteousness is given to those who anticipate and they live in the light of the return of Jesus. That his return is imminent. That it's going to happen at any moment. That's in 2 Timothy 4. The Bible talks about the crown of glory. The crown of glory is given to the faithful ministers who give themselves to lead the flock, to feed the flock. You can read about that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4. But now listen, though. The only, the only way this is possible, the, the only way in, in verse 11, when he says there, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom... The only way this is possible, listen to me, the only way that this grand and glorious entrance into this everlasting kingdom is possible for you and I is because of what Jesus did at Calvary. Now, I, actually, I'm going to take that back. It's what he did at Calvary, but then it's what he did three days later. Let's not forget that, amen? Amen. The fact that he went to the cross and he nailed our sins to the cross and we bear them no more, but then he arose from the dead and that is the hope of glory. There's the hope of glory. That he defeated death, hell, and the grave when he arose from the dead. Well, that's a great promise. There's a promise of a, a place of beauty. A place that we call heaven. Heaven, though, is not just a place. It's a place of 
it, it's an eternal place, and it's also a time. You, we got to understand that everlasting life is is forever. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to have the the reunion with our loved ones. We're going to have the mansion. We're going to see the the pearly gates, and we're going to have the rewards. But let, let's not forget this, though. Let's not forget the fact that we're going to be delivered from hell. We are delivered from our sin. And, and, and that simple fact should be the motivation for you and I to live by the instruction of the Word of God today. Today in this life. Follow the instruction that we've been given. Well, let me say this and I'm done. Hey, you know, all this works together. It, it, it all goes together. All right? Think about this for a minute. When you understand the instruction for the Word of God, because the Word of God is able to save, amen? amen? I mean, you can place a Bible in somebody's hand and tell them to read John chapter 3, and the Holy Spirit can give them the understanding of John chapter 3, and they can be saved. So the Word of God has the power to save. <clears throat> and so when we remember our instruction. And then when we remember our salvation, we will be reminded of our destination. We're going to be, when, when we remember our salvation, we will be reminded of our destination. And when we consider our destination, that will be our motivation to follow the instruction even more. It all goes together. I thought that was you remember the instruction you've been given? Or do you forget? Will you leave here tonight and say, oh, that preacher, he just went too long. That's a long sermon. I, I didn't get anything out of that. And by the way, if you don't get anything out of the sermon, don't blame the preacher. If I had to come down there and amen myself, I will, all right? I should have got an amen up there. Amen. Don't blame the preacher if you don't get anything out of the sermon. I do my best. The Holy Spirit ought to open the Word of God to you. I'm meddling, all right. But do you forget? How quickly? How quickly do we forget the instruction? If you go to Sunday school class and you learn something from the Sunday school lesson, do you forget it as soon as you leave? You know, James talks about that, doesn't he? Over in James chapter 1, doesn't he talk about that? How, how you, you read the Word of God and you can learn the Word of God. It's like looking into a mirror <clears throat> and you see your reflection. But as soon as you turn and you're no longer looking in the mirror, you forget. It's gone, just like that. Well, do you remember your salvation? How many of you remember the day of salvation? I do. Again, I don't remember what day it was. I don't remember what night it was. I know it was a revival service. That was back when revivals went week long. Y'all remember those? Week long revivals? Those are a scarcity nowadays, aren't they? But I remember it was a week long revival. I remember that. Remember the time you were saved? You remember the day that you surrendered to Jesus? You surrendered your life to Christ? Do you remember the fact that you have been cleansed from your old sin? Are you abound? these things. Well, look in, uh, look in verse 14. And look what he says. Verse 14. Knowing that surely I must put off my tent. Peter says, I ain't got much time. Left. Folks, we don't have much time. Left. And if you don't believe me, re-watch the debate last night. We don't have much time. He says, I know my time is short. Just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Don't we all have, in a way, don't we all want to know when we're going to take our last breath? And go to, we we kind of do, don't we? I mean, there's, there's that thought, where, you know, we all kind of have that thought from time to time where if we just say, well, Lord, if you would just tell me the exact day I'm going to die and go to glory, then that would be great. But we don't know that, do we? But Peter did. Peter says, Lord, you've shown me that I'm about to leave this tent. 
I'm about to leave this tabernacle. Now, I told you we was going to get to verse 15, so here it is. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after <coughs> my decease. I want to remind you. And I want you to remember. And I hope that you have been stirred up this evening. And if I need to stir you up some more and shake you up some more, just see me after the service. And I want to stir you up. And I want you to remember your salvation. Remember that you've been cleansed from your old sin. That you've been moved from the darkness to the light. That you've been <laughs> set free from the bondage of sin. You know, one thing I heard, I, 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 learned, I learned a few things at that retreat. Uh, I told you I learned a new Greek word. I've already forgot it, though, all right? <laughs> no pun intended there. Uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. But I, I learned something at that retreat. So he said, he said, Johnny Hunt said this. There are so many Christians today. They understand that they've been set free from sin. But, but he says, you picture a prisoner that is leaving prison. And they go through that door. They go through that gate to leave the prison. And they've been set free. But they're still carrying the chain with the ball and their dragon. There's, there's still the guilt of sin. There's still a guilt. And that's what sin will do to us sometimes. You know, maybe you have returned. Maybe you have returned to some of those old sins. That you, because you have forgotten. That you have been cleansed from those. So maybe tonight we need to repent and return to a right relationship. With our Heavenly Father. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, this evening, Lord, I pray that you would stir us up. Father, that you would do a mighty work in us. Something that only you can do through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you would get our attention. Lord, that we would be reminded this evening. And every day that we would remember the instructions from your word. Or that we will remember that we are children of God. That we have been set free, redeemed, delivered, born again, washed in the blood, regenerated. Lord, that you did something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. And Father, that you are a gracious, loving Savior. May we remember our salvation. And Lord, may we be reminded every day of our destination. That one of these days, this tabernacle, going to return to this earth. We'll be called home to glory. We'll go to sleep here, wake up on the other side. But Father, until that day, may we bring you glory and honor.